Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at landforms of deposition, specifically sand dunes. This is part of Paper 1, Unit C, Coastal Landscapes. On the screen you have a simple diagram of a typical sand dune. You can see the wind direction with the windward side which is a gentle slope facing the sea, the crest which can be up to 15 metres high, and the leeward side which faces away from the sea which is sheltered but has a steep and unstable slope. But what conditions do sand dunes need to form in the first place? Well they need the following conditions. They need a large wide flat beach with plenty of sand. They need a big tidal range so there is enough time for the sand to dry out before the tide comes back in again. They need onshore winds so sediment can be moved to the back of the beach and they need obstacles on the beach that can help formation such as tree roots or driftwood. So let's think about how the sand dunes form and how sand is moved around by the wind. Well sand is moved by the wind in three ways. Firstly, saltation. This accounts for around 95% of all movement and is where grains of sand bounce along as the wind picks them up and drops them again. We then have suspension, which accounts for around 4% of movement. This is where the wind picks up and carries grains of sand. And finally, we have creep, which only accounts for around 1% of all sand movement. This is where grains of sand collide and they push other grains along. So let's think about how the sand dunes form. Again, you've got a simple diagram on the screen that shows the sand moving up the windward slope, building up the height until the sand dune becomes unstable, and then the sand slipping down the leeward slope. But obviously there's a bit more to it. So sand dunes form where obstacles lay on the beach, and this will cause the heaviest grains of sand to settle on the obstacle, meaning that a small ridge will start to form, and the lighter grains of sand will start to settle on the other side of the obstacle. Over time, a crest will form on the side facing the wind. This is because the pile of sand has become really steep. This makes it unstable and causes the top of the dune to collapse under its own weight. After the collapse, the light grains of sand will slip down the leeward side, which is the side facing away from the wind and they will keep slipping until the slope has reached an angle of about 30 degrees. At this gradient, the slope is now stable. However, the wind will blow more material to build up the windward side, and the crest will collapse again, causing more sand to slip down the leeward side. This process will keep repeating and will cause a sand dune to move inland. Over time, the sand dune itself may become an obstacle causing more dunes to form. The size of sand dunes is dependent on wind strength. The stronger the wind, the higher the sand dunes. So we're going to finish off this video by thinking about sand dune succession. Sand dune succession is about how sand dunes and their vegetation changes as you move inland, which you can see on the screen. Several lines of sand dunes may run parallel and they will have distinctive vegetation. Sand dunes become taller as you move inland. Embryo dunes closer to the sea are only a few metres high compared to mature dunes further inland, which may be up to 50 metres high. Dunes get bigger because the sand is bound together by the roots of vegetation such as marram grass, which has very long, tough roots. Binding the sand together enables the sand dunes to grow high. Marron grass is also quick growing, which aids this further. Dunes change colour as they move inland. The ones closest to the sea are sandy in colour due to the lack of vegetation, whereas the ones further inland will have been colonised by vegetation, so have less sand content and will be more grey than yellow in colour. Between each line of dunes, you will find a slack. This is a trough which has been formed by removing sediment from the leeward base of one line of dunes and the windward side of the next line. The removal of sand can be so significant that the slacks are as deep as the water table, which leads to salty ponds forming. Sometimes a blowout may occur, which is a big depression caused by strong winds removing all of the sand following the loss of the protective vegetation layer. 
That concludes this tutor to you revision video focusing on landforms of deposition, specifically sand dunes. Thank you for watching.